Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here, Earthmaster. And once again, just afternoon here, California time on Monday, we've got a X flare coming in to the GOES X ray flux chart. Look at that. Peeking up there, uh, looks like around an X 2.0 right now. That's the current level. And uh, from the looks of it, looks like it may be coming off of the far side area along the western limb over here from one of these sunspots. Um, I don't see anything else out here flaring. This is behind a few minutes, but it looks like this area that we've been watching, the source of the last couple X flares, which is now out on the southwestern quadrant of the sun, about ready to get out of sight, out of mind here, decided to blow off one last departing shot. Uh, and again, it looks like a fairly strong X flare. X2.1, uh, there is a little bit of curvature here, so it looks like maybe, maybe it's just about ready to peak here. Looks like a fairly long duration event as well. X2.1, now that's going to be from that sunspot, which is called 3842, the most recent image here of the magnetogram image. Uh, shows that area with a lot of complexity here, quite a bit. Uh, with it being in this position, though, hard to say if it will be geo-effective in terms of any CME that it may have produced. We'll have to watch for the latest uh, information there from the Space Weather Prediction Center. A uh, number of sunspots also around here. On the eastern quadrant of the sun that we're watching, these areas will be geo... Well, actually, they already are geo-effective, at least this area. Uh, for some uh, stronger flaring and uh, any subsequent CME activity that it produces. Now the auroras are continuing to kick up here. Looks like this will remain a potential for G2, maybe even G3 class storming overnight. Um, things are favorable for the auroras after, after sunset there once it gets dark. So if you're out there in the uh, eastern portion of the country, watch for the northern lights. Uh, should be down to some uh, fairly low levels as well if it holds steady. Now, this is not just a maybe. This is currently happening right now. So this all peaked up from last night there when we seen the arrival, a late arrival of the CME where we observed uh, the uh, strong G2 storming conditions there last night with auroras all over the place. X2.1, I think this is going to be it. I think that's... Uh, the maximum level here and these images are just behind a few minutes so uh, that's got to be the only area I'm thinking of that uh, is produced in this X flare this is at 1905 so this is about 10 minutes behind and this X flare just coming in here in the last five minutes so it looks like this area was just getting ready to produce a significant flare um, and now it's uh, well it's peeking out there in an X 2.1 so, all right, um, kind of neat here. Got a little bulletin board up here from the solarham.com site. I, I do like to use this site here for uh, the uh, space information uh, sources. They got real-time solar wind charts up here. By the way, the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field here is south, open here, allowing that amplification of the auroras. That is what you want to see there when you're talking about uh, the aurora potential. And it looks like it's been holding steady here with no migration to the north. So that is good. That will continue to allow these auroras to be viewed after dark. But there's the uh, global D-layer map showing the uh, radio blackout centered over the east central Pacific area. Radio blackouts being... Uh, High frequency navigation or high frequency communication systems and low frequency navigation systems there that could be affected from this strong flare. That uh, again, I believe it's peeking out from this area right here. All right, folks, uh, stay safe, be on guard. Just wanted to jump in here and let you guys know about this uh, strong X flare. Earthquake activity somewhat quiet right now. Nothing major showing up here on the seismos. So far, it's somewhat of a quiet Monday.